Today we're going to learn about utilizing task highlighting with RadCant View. As a reminder, RadCant View is part of the Telerik Rad controls for Silverlight and WPF control suites for .NET XAML development. In today's video, first we're going to look at implementing RadCant View with MVVM, then we're going to add a pixel length Rad slider, then we'll add a Rad toggle button to enable highlighting. Finally, we're going to see exactly how you set up highlighting and how we can control this programmatically. Stepping into Visual Studio, I've already started up a solution to save a little bit of time. And just so you can see, in our references, we have that same Telerik Windows Controls, Telerik Windows Controls Gantt View, and Telerik Windows Scheduling Core. We additionally have Telerik Windows Controls Input to enable RAD slider as well as the RAD button that we need. Stepping into our XAML, we can see I've already defined a grid with some row definitions, some column definitions, and a RAD Gantt View that's covering the two columns. While we're going to be throwing some binding statements and other controls in here in a little while, first we want to go and construct our view model so we actually have some data to work with. So stepping into our Gantt View model, first thing we want to do is inherit from view model base. As you can see, this is coming from Telerik Windows Controls, so in case you're working with the Telerik Windows Controls and want to work some MVVM into your project, we already have a view model base set and ready for you, so you don't have to go rewriting that code on your own. So taking it from the top, we know one of the things that we're going to need is a collection of tasks to display within our RAD Gantt view. So for this, we can have public observable collection of Gantt task. We can call this tasks at a get and set. And then within our Gantt VM constructor, we'll go ahead and say tasks equals new observable collection. And then we want to go ahead and load tasks. For our load tasks method, I already have a little bit of code I can paste in here from our first getting started video just to save you some time for random task creation. There we go. And just to walk you through what we're actually doing here, we start a new date time. So we start at February 1st, 2012, just as a base starting date. Then we have two for loops. The first one's creating the parent Gantt task. And then after that, we add a child Gantt task and add relations to the children. One thing we're additionally going to need is a visible range to use for our Gantt view. This is, as I mentioned in the Getting Started video, essentially what sets up the range of dates that you will see within the Gantt. So here we can say public, visible range, Gantt range with our get and set. And right in the constructor here, we'll go ahead and say Gantt range equals new, visible range. And here we want to use the second option for new day time. And in this case, we can say 2012 to 1, because we know we want to start on February 1st. And we can go to new date time, 2012 for 1. So we'll span two months with our GAN. Now we can do a quick build just to make sure this is going to be referenceable from our XAML. Build succeeded, that's always good to see. Now back here, we're going to go ahead and add a local namespace, XMLNS local equals, and we'll see our project name, RadGAN view highlighting. And now under the user control, resources, we'll add a local, if I spell it right, local Gantt VM. Give this a key, XVM, something nice and short and easy to type. Then we go down to our layout route and we can set our data context. A little static resource, be XVM. And now we can set some binding statements on our Gantt view. First we need tasks source is going to be binding tasks. You can see it's designer view just already populated with that. And then we need to set our visible range. This is going to be binding Gantt range. And just like that, designer updated again. So now we can see the tasks that we've defined as well as the ranges updated for the pr proper display. If we go ahead and run this right now, we're going to see a much nicer view of this in the browser. There we go. And now you can see we have our four, if we minimize these, four parents. Each of them has a host of children. And if we go scrolling on through, we can see all the different items that we already have in our Gantt view, courtesy of that view model. But now, since this is a little tough to see all these appointments on a single screen, we want to go ahead and add that rad slider I was talking about. As I mentioned, I already have rows and columns defined, so I will go ahead and just drop in this rad slider and explain some of these values you're seeing. Now, the reason that we have the minimum, maximum, and value as such ridiculously large numbers is that we actually need to convert this to ticks for a time span and that's going to go through a converter. We can go ahead, add a new class, call this ticks to time span converter. 
And for this we have some handy code in our demos that you can go ahead and copy and paste to get your iValue converter. Clean our code up with just code really quick, save this up, and do a quick build. That way we're going to be able to reference this just like we referenced our view model. Build succeeded, again, always good to see. So now we can scroll on up to our resources, back into local, again, how to spell it right, and now we have our text to converter. This is going to need an X key, X converter, be creative with our naming. And we want to copy this so that when we're writing our binding statement here, we don't forget anything. Now we want to set the pixel length equals binding. Element name is going to be our X rad slider. Path equals value. And converter is going to be our static resource X converter. Now we can give this a quick save, run it once again, and now we'll have a much nicer option for viewing all these tasks that we have visible within rad Gantt view. As you can see, the slider's down here, and as I move it, we have some live zooming and zooming going on here. So you can either have a much wider view of all our tasks, or we can go and shrink that down and see a whole lot more tasks in our single Gantt view. This is what we want for the sake of the highlighting we're about to add, but just wanted to showcase how you can really quickly and easily add that in about a minute's work. Close this up and go back into Visual Studio. And the last thing we want to add is a rad toggle button. This is what's going to enable us to toggle highlighting on and off when we set up the highlighting functionalities. So we can say Telerik, rad toggle button, once the Telesense catches up, x name equals x toggle button. We know we need grid.row1, grid.column, also 1. Horizontal will be center, vertical will be center, content will be highlight. And now, before we go any further, we're going to need to step back to our view model because we'll need a property that we can share with between the view model and the toggle button to let us know whether or not we want to display highlighting. So we'll do a really quick save right there. And since we know this is a check button, we're going to need a Boolean value. So we can say private bool checked value, and then a public bool check value, and we'll need to get a getter and setter on here return checked value and then on the set a little bit more typing if checked value not equal to value we will set the checked value and do a quick on property change except because we're using the built-in view model that we have in Telerik we can do a very strongly type property change notification which makes it a little bit nicer for our code. No more magic strings than you need. Since we have our check value, again, we copy our magic string over. Go ahead and set the is checked property. Again, wait for intelligence. Do binding check value. So now if you see in our designer window, we scroll down, we have that slider and we have a toggle button. But we have a toggle button that doesn't actually affect the highlighting. So what do we need to do? Well, first up, we need another collection to handle the highlighting items. We can call this one public observable collection of Gantt task once again we'll call this highlighted tasks get and set if we go down to the constructor scroll down a little bit new up our highlighted tasks and now we're going to need of course a method to actually make this happen so we scroll down minimize our low tasks and we can make a void toggle highlight. This is going to get a bool, of course, nullable bool, m i highlighting. And what we'll do is after we have changed our property, we can go in and say toggle highlight and send in checked value. Since it will be updated and that way when we run our method we can check to see if we're highlighting or not highlighting. So of course the first thing we want to do, if this is actually a null, we're just going to return because we don't want to do anything for the null value only if it's selected or not selected, aka checked or not checked. So now we have two conditions to handle. If mi highlighting equals true, we do something. Else if mi highlighting equals false, we do something else. And the something else, I'll spoil the fun. This is just clearing the highlight tasks. So make that nice and simple. Now if we're highlighting, we're actually going to do the exact same thing first. 
tally task clear because we want to clear out the collection. And now it's just a matter of deciding which tasks we actually want to highlight. And for this, since we don't have actually any business logic going on within this demo that I'm working up, we can go ahead and just make it kind of random. So we'll, we'll add in a random. We need to pull a Gantt task as a parent. Parent GT equals tasks. Actually, step right through there. And we can use a randomizer dot next zero and say tasks dot count. Need that T as Gantt task. Now we'll grab a random number of tasks from that children collection. So we'll say int ran number equals random dot next. We'll start at two and we'll say parent gt dot children dot count minus two. So we'll never have to worry about any kind of index error. Last up, really quick for loop. I will be less than random number. Oh, rand number. And we'll actually start this at two. Again, just to be super safe, we won't want to run into any issues for our demo. And the last thing we really need to do is just add items to our highlighting task collection. So we say highlighted tasks dot add, and it's gonna be parent gt dot children. Of course we want to use that i iterator as Gantt task. So effectively what we've done is we say if we're toggling, we're gonna grab a random parent from the parents we have. We're gonna grab a random number of children within that collection, and we wanna add them to the highlighted collection. Since this is an observable collection, it's gonna be reflected back to the view. And really there's only one more thing we have to do at this point. Again, for type safety, highlighted tasks. I'm gonna take this, and we have to set a binding statement on our Gantt view. So one more binding statement here. And this will be, wait for IntelliSense, highlight item source. Binding our highlighted tasks. Again, Visual Studio is telling us blah, 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 something's not right. We'll go ahead and run it and we will prove it wrong. Now our next floor is all loaded. We can go ahead and play with our rad slider to view a few more tasks on the screen. And we click the highlight button. Now we get to scroll down and see which collection we actually highlighted stuff from. Aha, uh -huh, and seeing nothing is telling me that we went and missed a binding statement somewhere. I believe that's going to be the checked value on the toggle button. So we can scroll down. Yep, because we need to make this mode equals two-way so we can actually utilize the toggle button to showcase what we're doing. Once again, back to Internet Explorer, this time with a working example. Now we can make some more tasks visible. And then we go and click our toggle button because we want to make sure we're actually highlighting something for the demo. And we can see we went and highlighted these children. Uncheck it, and we can see that highlighting goes away. Highlight one more time. We picked the exact same one. And you can have fun with this as the day is long and see what items are highlighted. But as you can see, it's actually really quick and easy to do this. And in the next video, we're actually going to cover how you can add a little bit of business logic to the highlighting process. So we'll actually be using this project as a starting base and then building upon it with a custom Gantt task and all that fun stuff. I want to thank you for watching Utilizing Task Highlighting with Rad Gantt View. And don't forget, look forward to more videos in this and in the entire XamilFlux series to really ramp up your education on the Telerik RAD controls for Silverlight and RAD controls for WPF. So stay tuned.